Welcome back my internet family. The internet has been a place lately. A ah, place. With the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots of 1969, which saw members of the LGBTQ plus community clash with the police, which Pride commemorates. That's the origin of the pride that we all know and love, the one we all experience together today, you know, which feels much more like a community celebration of how far we've come. Yeah, there's been a whole lot of, but why do we need pride still? You know, they've got their rights now. Why are they out marching on the streets with their colors? And why is it all up in my face? Why are they out clogging up my city? What about straight pride though, you know? This video is gonna be about why we still need pride. And I'm making this mainly for those who kind of have to constantly face these interrogations from people and members of the community, for cis straight allies, everyone who is behind pride this is something that you can kind of quote from or send to people if that helps i'll be talking about why even though we should be working year round to make the world a better place for lgbtq plus people around the world why we do still need this colorful spotlight because a lot still needs to change this video is also part of the launch campaign of a new feature by revolut that enables users to donate directly to support charities including ilga europe who monitor and influence the adoption of eu legislation and policies that will impact on the rights of the community very 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 important so uh yeah this is a normal revolut card and i have one of these cool rainbow ones, which I'll tell you about in a sec. But yeah, now on top of users being able to use a Revolut card to withdraw cash, pay by card, to budget using their budgeting tools, to save money on currency conversion and to hold money in multiple currencies, which is brilliant if you're big on your travel, users can set up a one-off or reoccurring payment to donate directly. So no more forms, no more having to enter all your card details into new sites. It's simple, it's flexible, there's no commitments and there's no fees for the charity partners, which is really important. I donate whatever I can afford to every month, different causes all the time. I think this is a really cool and important feature and the best part about it is there's this spare change thing. So like say you can't afford to donate, you know, 50 quid a month. You know how normally if you're buying a coffee and it's like 375 and you give four euros and you get 25 cent back and you might throw that into a spare change charity box sat on a counter. Well with this card it does the same thing. I buy a coffee for 3.75 and I can set it so that that 25 cent goes into this kind of spare change little vault or purse or whatever like a digital one and then that builds up over time and goes to donations and every little helps when it comes to these kinds of really important charities you know. These rainbow cards are pretty cool and as an extra part of the launch the first 30,000 people to sign up to Revolut. It's all free you get the card for free and everything but uh, the first 30,000 of you to sign up from this campaign get one of these cards so I've a Link for that down below if you're interested in uh, helping out the gays. <laughs> we are stuck in lip. Um, so why do we need pride then? Let's have a wee look-see. Plenty of people do know this, but I think it's often swept under the rug because we're so used to seeing the glittery, you know, dancing men in pink dresses side of the community. But um, actually, depending on where you were born, it is still illegal to be gay. And in some countries, it's punishable by death by death. According to a report by ILGA, six United Nations countries impose the death penalty on consensual same-sex sexual acts. 70 UN members still criminalize same-sex relations between two consenting adults. In 26 of those countries, the penalty ranges from 10 years in prison to life in prison. The lesbians, the gays, the bi's, the queers, the transgenders, these people still aren't equal, even in the UK, in this place that we all think is so woke and fair and modern. No. Despite government plans to end gay conversion therapy, a practice very much condemned by human rights groups, it actually remains legal in the UK still. And this is a really big shock for a lot of people. I was really surprised even when I found this out. I only found this out a couple of months ago um, and I just start reading, reading, reading. I think self-education is so important with stuff like this. We're really privileged to have that but in some parts of the world, people don't have that privilege. They don't have access to all the same resources that we do. Religious leaders are often instrumental in forcing people to go through the process of gay conversion therapy. And research shows that most people who go through this suffer mental health issues right after and over a third attempted suicide. So it's no, it's no laughing matter. It's no frilly willies and boys and twinks. Like it's, it, this is really serious stuff, my peeps. Gay Christians experience 
a massive culture of homophobia. There are so many people who are gay and Christian and our religious leaders need to do more for these people, as does the government, like, move that along. I think we're all aware and we can all agree that there's currently a huge gap of knowledge and understanding surrounding gender on top of a whole lot of angry debate that's taking place in our media. And aside from the spike in violence against trans people and all of the harassment documented on the daily online, many people don't actually have the same rights as other people right now because of this. An example of this would be having the right box to tick on documentation, like passports, for example. And there are loads of different camps surrounding this. And regardless of where you stand on it, I think the way the way I try to look at the world all the time is to accept the world as it is. And right now, I don't know, a good analogy I feel like is, say you're trying to give a stat on the people at a party, the people in a room, and you give everyone a form that says tick the hair colour box and there's blonde hair, black hair and brown hair and they're the only options that those people can tick but then actually there's people in the room that have blue hair or purple hair or brown hair that has ginger on the ends and you need this stat to communicate who's in that room at that particular time and I think at the end of the day if an awful lot of people are identifying a certain way then if they're having to tick a box that doesn't line up with that the stats are inaccurate. Many trans people think one solution to this is to have AFAB and AMAB next to male and female so that gender is accounted for as well as sex so it's not really kind of causing any statistical issues or whatever but they're at least feeling seen. You know, going back to the little hair analogy, so what if someone's hair is dyed and it's not naturally blue? it's blue and I think it's a very relevant discussion that's happening but unfortunately nothing seems to be changing kind of fast enough for a lot of people and those things are really affecting certain people's experiences of the world so I think uh, yeah like Pride Month shines a light on these things and encourages open healthy discussion around these things it encourages people to educate others I, for one, still need a lot of education on topics like gender. I don't feel like I understand it enough and I don't agree with these people who think that enough has been done because the world is ever evolving and so is this community of people. Uh, Another biggie for me as an Irish woman on the island of Ireland, up in Northern Ireland, gay marriage is still illegal. Still. The government there, I just don't know what is going on, but it just seems like Northern Ireland has no head people making decisions. They're kind of, they're stuck between Ireland, which has been super progressive recently, and then the UK where same-sex marriage was legalized five entire years ago. The next reason we absolutely still need pride is that sex education doesn't really teach about LGBTQ plus relationships in the UK. Forget the rest of the world where people are being put to death because of these things. Uh, in England. Now MPs did recently vote to include LGBTQ plus people in new compulsory sex and relationships education but it won't be brought in until next year so you know currently there's this huge gap where young gay, lesbian, bi, queer kids all grown up without adequate education on something that is so core to the human experience and you know they're not seeing themselves in books or stories that are studied or anything like that you know heteronormativity runs very very deep and there is this ongoing debate as to whether schools should teach on lgbtq plus rights in birmingham parkland community school announced that it suspended its lessons on lgbtq plus rights. You know, you've, you have instances of parents pulling children from these lessons and so many children are going to grow up in this world. Well, in a country like the UK that has very liberal values, that welcomes people regardless of their differences, and these kids will be starved of very vital knowledge, leaving them at a massive disadvantage when interacting with the community at large. And um, I really don't believe that conversation is, is it suitable for my kids to know that there are kids with two mothers or kids with two fathers. I believe that's a conversation about do we teach tolerance to children? Um, Like, should a kid be bullied because they have one parent? No. Should a kid who has three parents feel quite um, alienated and excluded during lessons? No. As the sun sets on me while I film this video, um, I'll finish by saying the way we tackle homophobia like any bigotry is through education. So that is 
a massive one and curriculums need to adapt and change faster much faster I have a degree in education I'm aware how long these processes take um but we're living in a society that strongly believes that people should be treated fairly and equally regardless of sexuality skin color all these things that just isn't the case we're still seeing people be attacked on public transport we're still constantly hearing these awful stories of harassment and I have many friends in same-sex relationships and they still get dirty looks walking down the road holding hands with a partner and a lot still needs to change evidently so yeah feel free to pluck any of these points in conversations with people about why we still need pride in the future please share it with anyone that might enjoy it um do remember to check out revolu down below very fast growing company this is massively going to help me save for a house because i can budget my spending on this while still doing my bit of good and donating to charity and uh yeah thanks a million for watching see you soon so I just finished editing this video and I popped out to the shop, used my Revolut card and I just went to check how much had been saved up using the spare change function for charity on my Revolut app. It really does add up um, and I'm so proud to have been part of this campaign so I would love if you could check out the link down below and sign up to Revolut if you want to start utilising their donations feature and making use of the spare change function. Um, yeah, I just, just wanted to say that. I'll, I'll let you go now. Farewell.